How can you get a lower rate when you're buying a new home? I brought Sammy Olopoulos from Guaranteed Rate in to talk about a way to actually lower rate. Because right now, a big thing that we're hearing from a lot of people is interest rates are really expensive, right? They're really high. Yeah, they're going higher and higher and higher pretty much every day. And uh, one way to um, you know mit mitigate that is to get an adjustable rate. Versus the traditional fixed rate mortgage, Correct. right? Like that's what most people, when they think about buying a house, they generally think of this fixed rate product, 30 year fix, right? Correct, correct. Okay, so talk to me a little bit about this uh, adjustable rate thing. I mean, what, what, what is an adjustable rate? Sure, an adjustable rate is really just a, a mortgage that's fixed for a certain period of time, and then it adjusts for the remainder of whatever that time period is. Okay, so we'll, we'll talk about exactly what that is in a, in a couple seconds and how the mechanics of the adjustable rate works, but why could this be a good strategy? What are some scenarios where this ultimately might be a good strategy for a buyer? Yeah, one, it's, it's typically a much lower interest rate. You can okay. get a quarter to half a point to maybe even more compared to what a 30 year fix would look like. Um, but so ultimately truly saving like thousands of dollars possibly a year, yeah. a year right? Of course, okay. yep. And then the other reason would be you're not gonna be there for very long. So most people that, that are buying a house, they know that they're not gonna be there for more than seven or 10 years. So why would you do 30 year fixed? Right, so, so kind of some scenarios where maybe you know that you're gonna be moving out of the state. Right, and, right. And, and relocating, right? Or, um, you know, maybe you're about to have your first kid and you're planning a family of three and it's a two bedroom house, right? Like yep. might be another example, right? Correct. Just multitude of reasonings of you're not going, this isn't your forever home, Correct. right? Yep, okay. exactly. And then the other belief is really just um, that market rates are gonna just kind of decrease. I mean, ultimately, if, if you're having a, a, an adjustable rate and rates go down in the future, lower than where you're at, you could refinance, it'll save you a lot more money. Well, and I, I actually use myself as an example. We're gonna talk about this 7-1 in a couple of seconds. I got a 7-1 arm, right, of uh, the house that I'm currently in. And it was the lower rate, it was perfect, kind of helped me qualify for you know a larger house. And then, you know, basically, <laughs> The, the interest rates were really low. So I didn't need right. to refinance for a little while. And then I kind of saw the writing on the wall and that's when I ended up refinancing because the interest rate actually went down for me on that Correct. adjustable rate mortgage. So, Correct. Yep. so right now we, we're in a rising, increasing interest rate environment. Yep. The Fed has flat out said, we're gonna keep raising here, right? Correct. Yep, exactly. Okay, so I think it's important. So, you know, somebody like me, I think that once we get into the recession, eventually the Fed's gonna have to start decreasing interest rates Correct. to stimulate the economy, right? Correct, yep. So that would be kind of a market belief where if you think two or three years from now, the Fed will have e decreased interest rates significantly, then yep. right, this is where Correct. a scenario where it could really make a lot of sense, right? Correct, yeah, and you'll save even more money then. So a little gambling. Yeah, a little, a little gambling. A little, a little betting. Um, so definitely not for everybody. Yep. So, all right. So those are two examples of yep. why an adjustable rate will work, could work for Correct. somebody. Yep. Tell me, how do adjustable rates actually work? Yeah, they're they're pretty complex, but not too difficult. Um, basically, you'll have a fixed period of time that you're going to have a mortgage. Let's just say it's for five years or seven years or 10 years. Um, it'll stay fixed for that period of time. And then after that period of time, um, it will adjust for the remainder of the term. If it's 10 years that you had it fixed, then for the remainder, which is 20, will be adjustable. Now, no all in 30 years. So if it's a five Correct. year fixed, it's adjustable for 25 years. Correct. If it's a 10 yep. year fixed, adjustable for the other 20. Yeah, years. And, and they'll typically adjust, most of them prior to a few years ago, they would adjust once a year thereafter. Um, you'll start seeing more, uh, more lenders provide six month adjustables, basically meaning that they'll adjust every six months. And then basically they'll have like different terms on how they can adjust. There's always a cap. Right, so there's, they're gonna give you three numbers after your fixed period. They're gonna say, let's say five, two, five. The, the, the first number, the five, means that's the maximum interest rate uh, that it can go above the original note rate. So if your rate is at 5% and you add that five, that means the maximum rate it can go after the adjustment is 10%. Okay, so your, your, your long exposure is protected there. There is an absolute correct. max. Okay. Yeah, correct, there's a cap on it. Yep. And then the second one is, um, the two, right, uh, where I said 525, the two is basically what's the maximum it can rise within the next adjustment. So basically you'll have 2% as a max. So even if, if they calculate it and you're like, oh, you're gonna be at 10%, no, if your rate was 5%, the maximum it could be 7%. So, and the term there is rate shock. It's trying to, it's, Correct. it's yep. trying not to have such a huge rate shock for the, I mean, 2% is still pretty large rate shock. Correct. No difference between two to five percent. Yeah, so, correct. Okay. And then the, the last number is typically the number um, that 
that basically also is a cap on the initial rate. So basically if you started off at 5%, again, 10% would be the maximum. Um, normally the first and the last number tend to be the same. It just really depends on who the lender is. So a big question that I always find for adjustable rate mortgages, are there prepaid prepayment penalties for adjustable rate mortgages? Typically, no. no I mean, most no. most um, primary residences, I mean, it depends on the state and what, your, what the guidelines are, but typically there's no prepayment penalties on all those. So if rates drop in six months, you can go right ahead and refinance that. Which by the way is a really important one because if, if you get an adjustable rate mortgage and let's say, you know, it's a five-year adjustable rate, five-year locks period, yep. right? And you had a prepayment penalty, you know, for two years. Yep. And then interest rates started going down a year, a year and a half. And you know, like in, it would literally make it so that way you'd have to pay them correct a penalty in correct. order to refinance. So making sure there's not a prepayment penalty. Yeah, exactly. I, very, is pretty important. I haven't seen one in you know in a very very long time. Okay. So you were kind of hitting a little bit on the different types of adjustable rate mortgages, but you correct. Know, what what are all the different types? What what are the terms and the years that I can kind of expect? Sure. So um, not very common is the one year fixed where it stays fixed for one year and then you'll probably get into the three year fixed and then you'll go into the five year which is becoming more and more common um, the seven year is the most common because traditionally people tend to not keep their mortgages for more than seven years and then you will have a lot more too for a 10 year fixed also very rare there's sometimes a 15 year fixed now the longer it's fixed typically the higher the interest rate right. So that's why seven is tend to be a good um, so good so you kind of like to think of it this way right it's say if the 30-year fixed rate is six percent right let's just make up a number six percent um a 15-year fix is probably gonna be pretty darn close to that six percent for, yeah, yeah. for that 30-year fix okay. correct yeah and then if you're a one year it's probably gonna be a lot lower a lot right? lower yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you're gambling at that point. and 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 it's also important to know that it's never just one percent or two percent it depends on what the market is correct is the yeah. appetite of the market yeah. is right yeah the um the the adjustments typically um on all adjustables will they'll give you a margin so whatever the adjustment period is they'll say hey your margin is 2.75 so they'll take whatever the index is so the index would be the treasury the one-year library whatever the case may be and they would add that index to 2.75 so if your index is at 1% and your 2.75 is your margin that means your interest rate is 3.75 gotcha okay great um, so the other the other big question mm -hmm. I ultimately had is that or one thing I should say I noticed is is that um, I, I was reading some articles where there's been a flood of people to these adjustable rate mortgages since we've had uh, interest rates going up. I mean, is this something that you're seeing more and more or? Absolutely. Um, so we're getting a lot more questions about them. Um, not everybody qualifies for adjustable rates. Um, there's a pretty strict um, guideline that how you can qualify for it. Um, it's more, it's much more simplified if you're doing a seven or 10 year, which is again, why they're more common. Uh, but for five year, the guideline on qualifying is a lot more difficult, a um, lot more complex uh, based upon your income and what the maximum rates could possibly be. Gotcha. Um, but we do, get, we do get them all the time. Um, it's not always the best program, um, but in most cases, if you're borrowing a lot of money, it might be the best program because it'll save you the most money right. over the life alone. And one of my recommendations that I always say to my clients is, is, is if that um, your timeline in the house is five years, yeah. right? You're like, I'm going to be in this house for five years. Don't do the five one arm. Do the seven one arm. Yeah. You know, kind of it, it, it kind of gives you a little bit of flexibility just in case the oh shoot moments, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. there's a lot of people. Yeah, there's a lot of people that uh, think that uh, seven years or ten years is a long time. It really, it really it, it, yeah. So I mean, ultimately th things are going to change. Your your finances are going to change. Your lifestyle is going to change. So therefore, you're probably going to need another mortgage within that period of time. Right. Right. Okay, well perfect, so this is adjustable rate mortgages and this is how you can ultimately get a lower payment when you're buying a house compared to a fixed rate product. Right. Um, on the video uh, that I have above or on the video right now, on another video on the screen right now is where we talk about buying points. And ultimately this is another strategy that you can utilize when uh, buying a house and lowering your interest Correct. rate. So feel free to check out that video. If you have any questions, uh, reach out to Sammy. Sammy, how do they find you? Yeah, they can call me on my cell phone, 978-815. 2445 or email me at uh, s-a-m-m-y at rate.com. And I'm Jeff Chubb with the Chubb Homes team. Uh, should you have any questions and want to find me, my number is 617-480-2600 or online at jeff at boston2.com. Thanks for watching. Be sure you check out that video in buying points is the other way in order to uh, decrease your interest rate and look forward to chatting with you soon.